All right, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome everybody. So this will be my final set of videos. I'll be, I'll split this in half. This is for our final for Algebra 1, okay? Yay, year's over with, okay? So for you guys, you've made it. Congratulations, a majority of you have passed my class. You get to move on to geometry, which is a little tricky, but I'll be I'll always be around for next year to help out as best I can. So let's get started. I'm gonna cover about 20 to maybe 25 questions on this first video. And then the second video, I'm gonna do the rest of it uh, because we do up to 45. So James, remember when we were talking about story problems like this or word problems or any type of scenario, keep the money together, keep time together, keep mile, mileage together, keep things that are in common together in the statement of a phrase. So what I mean by that is as you read through this, remember we had talked about that 55 miles per hour, he passes an exit 10 miles away, related to T, in time, okay, time in hours. Well, the only thing in time in hours would be 55T. So we talked about in my class is always eliminating, and if you're leaving something, it's gonna be negative. So please make sure you understand that. Then, you read this, you may think, well, I don't know how to do that or what they're talking about. The reference here is look at your answers. It's T equals. So you're taking this equation and you're rewriting it, okay? You're rewriting it into a form where, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be uh, equaling t. So you just rewrite it for t. So you do the, sim the math on it that most of you should be able to do in here by now, okay? Where you start by subtracting 10, because you don't touch the t. So now you have d minus 10 equals negative 55t. Divide both sides by 55. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you split this up. So negative and a negative is positive. So it would be, uh, well, we'll go negative of this first. So it's D over 55, okay? And then that is negative. And then you have negative and negative is positive, and that can be reduced down to two over 11. So there's your answer is C, right? Uh, on the test, hopefully if the test matches up with our review, this will be a whole number. You'll still have a fraction here, but this would be a whole number. And then you move on to this. So what you're doing is, remember on our review, I said I, screwed, I had screwed this part up, put that as a five, rewrite it. So t over 11 minus five over 55. All right, what does that equal? You can reduce this to one over 11. So it's two over 11 minus one over 11. And if you do the math on that, two minus one is one. Now, what this means is this is one eleventh of a mile per hour. So if you wanna know how much time has passed in an hour, there are 60 minutes in an hour. Multiply that together, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be 5.45. So about five and a half minutes have passed, okay, or that's how much you still have left, all right? So here's the deal. On the test, this should be a whole number, okay? You still have a fraction here. You still need to multiply it by 60, but your answer should be a whole number, and you'll see what I'm talking about from there. On this, ladies and gentlemen, you split these in half, okay? Mean is the same as an average. So the average, you just add things up. So on here, so I have my key, so I don't have to add them up. We have four females, if you count it out. They are 320 scores, which means their score is 80. So that's the females, okay? The males, there are five of them. If you add everything up, it comes out to be 395. If you do that in the math, it comes out to be 79 for the males. So what does that mean? It means the females have a higher mean. So A and B are gone. Now it talks about greater or less variability. These two variability means are the scores the same or not? Females have two, the males however have three. So what they're doing is they actually show less variability. The males, okay, would actually show the other one. So it is D in this case. Now the key thing on this though, is that when you're going through the test, what happens if they were both the same? Okay, if they're both the same, then they would be equal variability, right? Where there's, they're not really, they're struggling with the same aspect, right? So make sure you keep note of that. We'll work on the mean first, and then get the second half of the answer. All right, uh, number three, keep the money together. I could read this whole thing through, but I don't have time to do that. Keep the money together, okay? And then look at your answers here, and you can see how this sets up. This makes no sense because this is basically saying uh, 200 and 200, but if you add that together, that's technically you're spending $400. So neither one of these can be correct. So you're left with A or B. 
So you look at it and you say, where's the money? Money is 20 cents, money is 60 cents, the money is 200. So it can't be this one because the money here, that's not money, that's actually fluid ounces. So it'd be the other way around. So just keep an eye on the answers and make sure you guys understand that concept. Four, four what you would do is you would go on the Desmos and you would plot it, okay? Now, we had talked about this multiple times. You can, you got one point here, but you can't plot this point, okay, on your graph, all right? When you're doing the test, you can't click and drag. You can do this one, but that's it. You could drag along the way until you get a solid number like one and negative two like that. Or ladies and gentlemen, remember the table function. Gear button, click the table, bam, five points right there. Negative two, one, one negative two. You guys see them, they're like listed up here. Simple as that, okay? That's the easiest way to find, find the five points. Then you come up on here, you'd go right here, and then you would go, what was the other one? Um, it was negative, so negative one, negative two, okay? And then so on and so forth. Negative one, negative two, and then the other one's over here. You figure it out, you guys know how to do it, right? Use decimals. Number five was a duplicate, we messed that up. Number six, big old long thing about giving students memorization. If you wanna read it to yourself, feel free to. I'm just gonna give you the answer on it, okay? One thing about it, we had talked about in here, which conclusion of this experiment, which conclusion of the experiment is most justified? Well, when I see that in my answer, and then I look here at my answers, and I see the experiment, the experiment, you wanna pick those because that's the proper way of rewriting a statement, okay? C is the answer. A and C look a lot alike. Technically, they're same in some of the aspects and toning of it. But in reality, C is a lot closer to what you want to have. Seven, how do you answer these? The first time I saw this, I'm like, what is this? And this is weird, I've never seen it before. We had talked about in class, rewrite it. So instead of saying Y equals KX, we know K equals 1.5. So you take this value here and you plug it into this equation, right? So it's 1.5X. Then you know Z equals 1.5 squared. Well, what is that? You go on Desmos, ladies and gentlemen, you type it in. Please don't guess, because some of you in here are wrong, are not good at guessing, all right? 1.5 squared is actually 2.25, not three. All right, so there's your two terms. Here's the key. Looking at this, these are all whole numbers. So my answers to Y and Z have to be whole numbers. So just plug and play, figure it out. Let's do the first one, 1 1.5 times three. Let's see if we get a whole number, okay? 1.5, so let me back that up. Whoops. Back this up here, times three, four and a half. Nope, can't be three. I think the next number is four. Bingo, there's a whole number, so now we got one. So now let's do the other one. 2.25 times uh, four, because we don't use the same value of X is there we go, nine. So your answers are four, six, and nine. Hopefully you guys understood that. So what we did is we found a value for X, which in this case was four, and then we went in and we multiplied it out. And we realized that that's nine, this is six, there we go, okay? Solid numbers all along the way. You guys do the same thing, okay? The weight of the dogs, make sure you understand, could you pick a different number down here, like five or six, that might work for the first one, but the problem is it won't work for Z, because whatever you use for X has to be the same value for both cases, okay? Um, number uh, 12 is the next one. So these got out of order, that's okay. Rearrange these equations, all right? Median, 25, 36, 42, 44, uh, then it would be 48 and 50. Median is find the one in the middle. So these two share a middle. So you'd add them together, divide them by two, you get 43. So which dog, the only one that wouldn't change it is the actual dog that weighs 43 pounds. Holly's measuring the length of a spring. We had multiple discussions in this class about this. Here is your equation of the spring, okay? On this equation of the spring, all right, it finds, it's asking you what is this, all right? Not what does the equation mean, 
But what does that particular coefficient mean? Well, in this instance, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the stretch of the string, okay? Because it's, it says 7.98 grams is 0.46 times, no, okay? It's not the weight of this because that number is too big for the kilograms. So if it comes down to A or D, right? And the reality of this is that the answer of this is D. The length of the spring increases by 0.46 centimeter for every 100 grams that is added. So 100 grams, so every time you add 100 grams, what happens? This stretches out 0.46. So the actual answer to this is D. A is the actual telling you what the equation is, okay? A is the length of the spring is 7.98. Correct, it is. And with a weight of 46 grams attached to it. Yes, yes it is. That is what the equation is, but that's not the meaning of this number. So that is what we'll talk about in one of my classes. The only class that we didn't talk about that specifically is third hour. And so I will make sure if you missed this review that you figure that part out. All right, Andrew started off his week making $46 an hour. So if you think about something, Andrew made 46, all right? So it's up here because actually that would be the equivalent of Y, It'd be 46 right here, okay? That's technically speaking, if he didn't work, all right, 46 equals 46. You guys get it? All right, if he didn't work at all, 46 equals 46, yes. So Y is 46, all right? Every day he works, he spends $4. So his number is gonna actually start to decrease. So we have a linear equation that's going down. Question is, is what is a reasonable domain? Well, the domain are days. So if you're looking at days of the week, would you start with the number 10? I don't even know what that means, day 10? I mean, why would you start with day 10? No, I wouldn't even start with day six. Or would I start with day four? I would, however, start with day zero seven days a week. 15, look at your answer. So here's a nice car, this is a nice box and whisker. That looks beautiful. What is the answer saying? Least, 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 least. Least is this number right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 25,000. If it asks for most, be that number right there. Okay, that is most. If it asks for the median cost or the average, okay? Median cost, this right here number would be median. All right, so, or mean. Just make sure you guys get it, the middle cost. Understand what you're looking at, okay? That's the most important thing about this graph. Which expression would best describe a line of fit? How would you answer these? Desmos, all right? I'm not gonna graph it Desmos. I'm gonna give you a reality scope. This is your slope, which means it would be a pretty steep slope. Uh, four is still a steep slope, not as steep, it'd be something like this. Two is a little bit better, it'd be something like that. Half, however, is very flat. So ladies and gentlemen, the answer is D. What kind of slope is this? Negative. This is the only negative answer. Graph it in Desmos if you want to match it up. Rewrite the equations. Solve for M. Subtract B, because remember, you're getting everything away from M. So when you have MX, Y minus B, and then you're gonna divide both sides by X, there's your answer, okay? Solve for R, same thing. These are multiplications. Opposite of the multiplication is division. It'd be two pi, two pi, so R equals C over two pi, all right? Simple setup. Group nine, or this one, nine, talks about people who, so what number, what percent? So this one's about percentage, okay? What percentage of people surveyed played golf? So they play golf, so it's this column here. So you would go down like this and have a domestic car. So who has a domestic car? These people do. Which one is the only one that has a little box around it? 24. So we know 24 people is the answer. They want percentage. How do you figure out percentage? It's based on the total. They asked 40 and 40 here. So technically speaking, there are 80 people. So you divide this by 80, you put it in the calculator, ladies and gentlemen, you will get 0.3. What does 0.3 mean in percentage? That means move the decimal place twice, 30%. 10, 
Which ordered pair would represent the points on the graph? So, ladies and gentlemen, you answer this by using decimals, okay? So on decimals, I have it set up right here. Um, when you work on this part, all right, same thing we've done before. You take this, you click the gear button, and you give yourself your graph, okay? So your very first answer on there is zero. And if you look at it, zero, it says zero is supposed to be six. In fact, it is not, okay? It is negative six. So then what you do is you do your next point. The next point on here is four. So we change this to four, negative five, bam, that's one. And it says we're looking for a second one, so let's just try the next one. 16, bam, that's one, negative two. So your answers are A and B. If I were to go in here and it says one fourth, one divided by four, is not quite six, that's what it's supposed to be. So that's not one, and the other one is the same. So go in decimals, convert it to a table, and figure it out, okay? Now this one here is what is the joint frequency of students? So they're not looking for a percentage on this one, they wanna know the frequency of students. So the students who play sports, so who plays sports? Uh, these people, so one other way you could do it is if you were to imagine a highlighter, these people play sports, and then of those people that play sports, who do not play a musical instrument? Nobody plays a musical instrument. Where is the intersection? Right there at 41. So your answer, ladies and gentlemen, is? Forty-one, okay? Highlight the graphs. Find out where it intersects. Simple, that's how you read those VINs. System of linear equations. This was one of the harder ones, and we wanted to do a system of substitution, okay? So we're gonna rewrite this equation because we gotta solve for x. We're gonna rewrite this one to be y, okay? So it would be, so if it's cx minus y equals d, all right, you would subtract cx from both sides, and then you'd have negative y equals negative cx plus d. Do you leave it like that? No, because this exponent can't be negative. So you just switch the signs. Now you could multiply a negative one and do it, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna switch all the signs. Y equals CX minus D. So now what you do is you take this answer here, right, and you plug it into this original equation here at the other one. So now we write this out to be A plus, or be X plus A. And then instead of putting Y, you put this setup of the equation. So it'd be capital letter C, X minus D equals B. Now, next thing, order of PEMDAS, all right? Your PEMDAS order is distribution. So you distribute the A, so it's still X plus, but now it's A, C, X, and then it's gonna be minus A, D equals B. Next thing is, is you need to make sure you continue to simplify. As you simplify this equation, all right, you don't touch the X's yet. You don't touch those, so you gotta move the AD plus AD. When you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you got bad. Or B, it's actually uh, B plus AD. If you go from here, okay, what answer only has that setup? Rewrite in a different way, but it's actually C. So if I finish this out, okay, if I were to finish this out, this would be x plus ac x equals, and then it would be ad plus b. And then what you do is you factor out the x. So when you factor out the x here, if you have left behind, it would be x and it'd be one plus ac equals this. Divide both sides by ac, and then ladies and gentlemen, that's how you get that answer. This is a harder question because you'll be doing a lot more of stuff like this in algebra, deuce. So please make sure, or dose, that you get ready to uh, do that later on, all right? Uh, by the time most of you in this class reach algebra two, I won't be teaching it, but I should have some videos up for you guys to help you out along the way. So you'll get another opinion or another voice as you go through. Um, Juan saved 1,500 bucks. So if he saved 1,500, it can't be this one or this one because that's the amount he saved. All right, and then it looks says he spent money, so it's decreasing in value, subtraction. Population growth, okay? 10 to the sixth power, we had a conversation about this in class. Please don't assume you know what this is, all right? 10 to the sixth power, ladies and gentlemen, is 10 to the sixth power is one million, not 10 million. 
So since it's one million, ladies and gentlemen, know that C and D are gone. Then you have to make a choice. What's the percentage? Well, it's 0 0.03. 0 0.03 is not a percent, that's a decimal. How do you change a decimal in a percentage? Remember, you move it two places to the right, so it's actually 3.0% or 3%. So the answer is B. 19, Vincent found that all the points in the following data set lie on a best line of fit. So he said that they found that they lie on a best line of fit. What is a best line of fit? A best line of fit is a, when R equals one or negative one. So right away, C and A are gone. The only question is, is, is this line of fit positive or is it, is it negative going down or is it positive going up? So ladies and gentlemen, you go into decimals at that point and you graph it. See the blue dots, let me zoom out a little bit. Is that gonna form a positive or negative line? That of course is gonna be positive, so it's R equals one. Um, go a couple of other ones on this video here. 20, the number of students in Jason's martial arts class increased at a steady rate of 13 students per year. So if you know you're increasing by 13 students, it can't be this, okay? Because that means that's a, a baseline of 13, all right? Um, Jason started with five students in class. What equation best represents after one year? So if I start with 13, okay, uh, or if I start with five, and then I add 13 a year, it's not gonna be subtraction, it's gonna be addition. 21, graph the following equation by identifying the x and y intercepts. No, don't do that. We could do the math on it, but you ain't got time for it. Ladies and gentlemen, enter it in Desmos. So if you enter this in Desmos, okay, your setup would be your x and y intercepts. Please label them out, zero, two, and three, zero. So I'd go zero, two, three, zero. There are my intercepts, I'm done. Uh, 22, in the expression below, A, B, C, and D are integers, where B and D are not equal to zero. What is a true statement that validates this expression as a rational <gasps> number? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the one thing you have to understand is that uh, the answer to this particular equation, it talks about integers and all the craziness that's involved with it. Um, I would like to say to you that I'm smart enough to try to figure out the example to it. All I know is the answer is C, okay? A, C, and B, D are integers. Why? It's because of the combination, okay? So what that means is that these have to be integers together, where we multiply them together, they have to be rational integer number, all right? Because if I, these could all be integers, all right? That's great, but if they don't, if they multiply together and they create an irrational number, that doesn't matter. All right, what matters is that the top two are rational numbers once you add them, multiply them together, and then the bottom two are rational integers as you add them together. That's what's most important, okay? Just because this is a rational number, when you multiply it by this, it doesn't mean the other one's going to be. You have to make sure the tops and the bottoms are actually the same, okay? So Tim is training for a half marathon. He runs a total of 20 miles in the first week of training, increases the number of miles, if the number of miles n, if the number n of miles run during Tim's last week of training is known, what does the expression below represent? So if we know what this means, okay, so what this means is as you're reading through this problem, if I were to change this, okay, to say the number of miles ran, Tim ran in his last week. So if we ran in his last week, uh, say 100 miles, because he's preparing for this marathon, if he ran 100 miles in here, okay, you would write this out, and then you'd have 80 over 10 plus one, which would be reduced to eight plus one equals nine. So what does the nine represent? The nine would represent, if you read this again, he runs a total of 20 miles during his first week. So his first week, he ran 20. After that, he increased his numbers every each week by 10, okay? So if we increase the number each week by 10, because that's what you're doing here, how would we know how many, what does the number nine represent? It would represent the total number of weeks Tim trained, okay? So here's the formula. It's not number of miles ran, uh, that Tim ran each week here today. No, that, that doesn't make any sense, okay? The formula was based on trying to understand how many weeks he ran, okay? If he's training for uh, 
if he's trained for a half marathon. Okay, hopefully you guys understand that concept, okay? That the answer is C because it talks about the total number of weeks, right? Um, and so ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna end this first, first part of the video on this one. I'll film part two, probably after school today. If you have any questions, okay, we're on question 24, uh, so we're halfway there with this review. As we go forward, make sure you study, watch part two, uh, finish it up, ladies and gentlemen, look at the review, make sure you know the math, and you will ace this final. I believe in all of you. And it'll be a great, great day in class on Tuesday and Wednesday when we get to celebrate the great achievement of passing my class and having an outstanding grade in Algebra 1 for your freshman year.